Well, when God's in the house, you have no agenda. Well, I tell you what, last night when uh, uh, when we were here, I could see the Shekinah glory cloud came in through worship. Yeah. And uh, it's up to you, you know, whatever you want to do. You don't have to play. I don't want to burn your fingers out. But I, but tonight, the the you know, last night, I, I when I began to see the cloud, I almost didn't minister because... Uh, the Lord really is trying to mature the body. He's trying to mature the body to be able to function in his presence. And when the cloud shows and when the angelic comes and, uh, you know, it talks about the upper room where they fell on their face. And th there's th I'm telling you tonight that there's a this is going to be an international message because there was an angel that came that followed me from the south. I know he came from Mexico, but there's an angel here and he's an international angel. And I'm going to talk to you about that in just a minute, but I want to tell you something. I just want to be obedient because the Lord began to tell me, he says, yeah, you know, we, we, look at, we look at states, we look at cities, we look at regions, we look at countries. But before man even came to the earth, God had already put his thumbprint in every area of the earth. So it doesn't matter if you're an immigrant. It doesn't matter if you're a settler. There's a call and a purpose on each and every region in, the, in this world. And God's going to bring people to a place that have that presence, that has that DNA, that, that matches the call over that region. And I'm going to tell you right now, the one thing that I heard, I heard y'all speaking in tongues, and y'all shouldn't have done that because I tell you what, I can interpret it. I'm going to tell you, this is what the Lord told me. He says, I am gathering the eagles. And this is what he began to tell me. He says, eagles, this is going through media. Come out of your caves. When you're in your living room, mount up. I began to see last night in this cloud and in this glory realm. I be, I, when this cloud came in, I began to see the members of the government of heaven because the Lord says that he watches over his word. And when the word is being released and the DNA of the house begins to match the DNA of heaven, heaven appears. And I, as the cloud began to come, I began to see the feathers. I, I, I saw the feathers coming over my shoulders. The shoulders represent government. And I'm calling out through the media right now. There's an international angel here. And I'm going to tell you, it's got the scrolls of Daniel. It's got, the coat, it's got 12 robes and tribes, a coat of many colors. This is an international angel to commission. He's calling back the eagles. I see the bald eagles, the golden eagles. I begin to see the eagles of fire. He's calling all the eagles to come out of the cave. This is a time. This is a voice. The Lord is gathering the voice over the nations. I'm calling out those that are that have eyes to see, those that are in the prophetic, those and, and I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you there's eagles right now. I'm calling you through the media. Take your place. Begin to take your flight. There's mountains that are set before you. This is a call for the eagles to release themselves. Come out of the caves. This is the time to begin to proclaim what heaven is releasing. Eagles, take your place. There's a communion. There's a communion. There's a gathering right now in the spirit. This is going out for those that are in your living room, for those that are in your truck, for those that are in your apartment, for those that are watching right now. There's a prophetic call over your life. There's a mantle. There's a commission over your life. I'm telling you, there's an angel here. He's right behind me. There's a commission. He's commissioning us. He's commissioned us before the foundations of this world. You're going to begin to see yourself the way that he sees you. This is not a local house. This is an international house. There's a portal here. And it's not just called to stir up the local and the city, but it's called to create winds that are going to affect the nations. I see the eagle's nest. I begin to see the nesting of the eagles. Yes. We're going to transition. 
here in a minute. But I know there's a message, and the Lord wants me to begin to talk about church transitioning into kingdom and the purpose for that. We call those that carry that prophetic mantle, those that have been shut down, those that have been disconnected, those that have not been honored, those that have been separated by a political spirit, those that have been separated by governmental, demonic, Pharisee assignments. We call you back. Woo! 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 There's healing and commissioning. I see eagles with broken feet. Oh, the Lord's going to have you fly. You're going to be healed in the air. You're going to be healed in your soaring. You're going to be healed in your commissioning. You're not called to sit in the couch. This is an international call. There's been a birth right over this world, over this nation. the gathering of the eagles. <sighs> I see eagles in California right now being called out. As you begin to fly in California, I see the Lord healing California right now. I see the Lord restoring the lands and restoring the mines. I see the lighthouses turning back the lights on for the commissioning of the ships to come back into the ports. The leaderships will see. They will find their light. Things that did not work, God's going to put back to work. I see the mountain of inheritance. There is no lack. There is no lack. I see old conveyor belts that the political spirit shut down. God is moving. He's oiling these conveyor belts. He's calling back manufacturers. Things that were closed by man, I will open. Tonight, Eagles, your commission. There's a great commissioning right now throughout the media. 
<laughs> There's a leader in Africa right now. I can see you. The Lord is going to restore your village. I see peace coming between our countries. Lord's going to have revelation in China of the Spirit of God. There's going to be a movement in Russia. There's going to be an outbreak of revival in Russia. There's eagles that are called carriers. They're like the battleships that are carriers. God is sending the ministry of helps, the aid for the house. To restore the house, to restore the broken heart. God is putting people back in line. <laughs> oh. What's going on? We thank you, Father. We thank you for this international angel that you've brought to this place, Father. There's a stirring in this house. There's a vibration in this place. And it, it's, I'm going to tell you what it is. Before the foundations of this world, Lord knew you were going to be here. There's an echoing back from the beginning of time. He says, I knew you before you were in your mother's womb. I'm echoing back because you cannot hear because of layers and layers of tradition, because of offenses, because of circumstances. Those are shadows. Those are layers. And the Lord has taken these layers off. And he's going to begin to place you in the heavenly realms so you can be able to see. Woo! Oh, Lord! Oh, Lord! Woo! I just heard the Lord say, I find my rest in your commission. I find my rest in your commissioning. I have not been able to rest. I've been interceding for you to take flight. <laughs> Oh, God is restoring man. Mm. Oh, man, where do we go from here, brother? When the presence come like this, you don't have to be prayed for. You just grab it because it's already there. It's in the atmosphere. There's a shifting of correction. The correction of vision. When your eyesight begins to come correct, everything snaps back into place. Legs go back. The back comes back together. The pins in your ankles fall out of your body. 
<laughs> the metal leaves. The car accidents of the nerve endings begin to connect back together. The earth responds to the kings. Father, we just thank you right now, Father, for the call of the eagles, Lord. We thank you for the international call, Father. We call those that are in the media to take your place. We thank you, Father. We thank you. Thank you, Lord. Pete, you got any on this? You got something to say, bro? Man, I don't, hey, come on, man. I can feel your spirit pulling me. You need to stop messing with me here, man. The Lord is, I'm telling you right now, what the Lord is doing right now, not just in this place, but out in media, he's restoring brain cells. He's restoring brain cells. There are people right now that cannot function. I'm telling you right now, he's restoring the mind. In order for him to bring correct vision, the mind has to be restored. The house is the one that has the anointing and the antidote for healing. There are certain things out there that the hospitals cannot find for, for healing that the church has. Everything is in his, everything is in his anointing. Everything is in his presence. We worship, we preach, we teach. All of these attributes is to get us back into the, to get us into the presence of God. And when the presence shows up, even his presence is higher than his word. When the presence of God walks in, he wants to teach us how to walk, to know that the river just doesn't lie in a geographical place, that you are a carrier of the river. To know that everywhere you go, you have dominion. You have dominion. This man with the beard right here with a gray shirt, can you stand up? Yeah. Something's happening in your house. I, I see... I see a, 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 I just see your living room change. I just see like things have to grow around you. Things have to get bigger around you. Things cannot stay the same. And as i looking at you, I, I just see you like a carpenter and I see you building, th building walls and you're, you're like a, a, a mechanic. God has gifted you with your hands. He's gifted you with your mind. And he's not going to allow you to become settled. The Lord is not allow. he's not going to allow you to become settled because you're called to be a river, not a pond. Because if you're a pond, you're going to become stagnant and you're going to die. Vision tonight is coming to you because he's about to extend your full purpose and potential of what he's given you. It's not to dwell. It's not to settle. It's, and that's why he's messed you all up and brought some frustration and agitation and all that. It's the Lord doing that. And it doesn't matter if you think, see, the enemy and the religious spirit will make you feel that you are a part of the issue. But God allowed you and your hard-headedness and your heart. Because of your heart, there's a pool around you. I'm telling you, it's almost like I see you in a small house. And then I see you frustrated in areas of your life. But your vision is bigger than where you dwell. They say that any like a snake, you can't put it just in a tank of 30, 40 foot rec uh, uh, a snake. It has to get in. It has to live in to an environment to where it can begin to grow because if the tank is too small, it'll restrict its growth. And no religious spirit, no city, and no town is going to restrict and limit the purpose and call over your life. God's going to extend your vision and your purpose. And, and I'm telling you, I just see you as a man that has every tool that is needed. And if I don't know how to fix it, I'll figure it out. And that's an evangelist. Somebody that can go out there and that can function in any, a, a believer, an unbeliever, different denomination, non-denomination, Jehovah Witness. Any, there, you, God is giving you anointing to have the voice from a doctor all the way to the one that is a priest, a high priest, a Catholic, a president, a non-president, a, a queen, a king. God has given you, there's different levels of anointings over your life where the voice of God is going to hit every level, everything, every function, every purpose in your life. That's the favor of God. You understand that? You came tonight, 
and you thought you were just going to hang out. But the Lord is really downloading. You know what he did? He had to press reset. Shut the phone off to turn it back on to download. You haven't, you haven't updated your phone. And you need to update it so you can see where you're at right now. You understand that? The Lord really has many things for you. And I'm telling you right now, you will never have to pray for provision. You're going to begin to see how big of a giant you are. I just want to bless you, man. Change, winds of change. And some of this stuff you may not even be able to see, but I'm telling you right now, I see you becoming a home builder. I see a business op opportunity because of what you can do with the money. You're not, you, you can live with, you, you don't care where you lay your head. But I'm telling you right now, because of your heart, I can hear the wood cracking. And you're going to build houses for those that even can't even afford it. I see you really providing for those that are homeless. There's something with the homeless and the abandoned. That God's going to give you permission to go and house those that have no houses. You believe that? Yeah. Because you're tired of that. You're tired of seeing people with lack. And I'm going to tell you something. There's a, there's a gift of revelation that's going to come. And it's because you, you have a desire to teach. And God's going to download on you. And when you begin to help, you're going to begin to minister. You're, you're going to be like, man, that was good stuff. I need to write this down. This stuff is just spitting out. So Holy Spirit's really going to begin to manifest in you. Because with that gift of building, you need to teach. You understand that? Check this out. The thumb is the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. When you close your fist and you put it on the table, the teacher is more accountable than all of them. God's given you an anointing to reteach and to bring perfect theology out in the streets. So there's open window. I see favor of banks. I see banks, banks that you cannot even get a loan are going to ask you to please come and get a loan from us. See the favor of man over you. You receive that? Just put your hands in the air. Thank you, Father, for this man. Thank you for his heart. We thank you for those that will be around him. Will, he will affect their lives. He will bring purpose and destiny, Father. He will be the eyes for people that won't be able to see. He will be the ears for those that cannot hear. He will have a heart for those that can't even begin to breathe. You have an anointing on your hands. There's, I just saw this. There's an anointing on your hands for the respiratory realm, the respiratory, the, the lungs and the, the heart. There's something with the respiratory. God is really giving you an anointing to heal the sick, even in the, that respiratory realm, because you're an eagle. And your breathing is changing right now. And your desire for him is changing. So, Lord, we just bless him and we just honor him. And we just ask the vision and the purpose, Father. Hmm. We thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. 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 We okay? Are we all right? Man, I got some stuff to spit out, but, I, man, we just, golly, what are we doing? What did you do inviting me out here, Pete? Man, God loves us. You know that? He really does. He really does. He really loves you. That lady in the purple, can you stand up? Yes, ma'am, chewing gum. Come on, come on. It's all right. It's all right. Come on up, stand up. I saw you like a marathon runner, running from city to city, carrying a torch, turning on the lighthouses, giving people direction and purpose. God has to, you're going to have strength of a 15-year-old. I see you jogging. I see you riding a bike. I just see you just declaring the Lord in the streets. I'm telling you right now, I just, there's something about marathon and conditioning and, and, and the Lord's really, uh, uh, he's just coming in and I just see him breathing new life in you. I just see him, you know, you know your joy and your love doesn't belong on the couch. He's going to get rid of your golf clap. And it's going to begin to echo over cities. You're really a fire starter. You really are. The desires that the Lord has given you is not supposed to stay in your mind. 
You're supposed to begin to speak what you see. You're a seer in the spirit realm. Yeah. I see I see a, a room like a craft room and then I see uh, like bread makers and I see I can go in your kitchen and I can see where you can almost make or bake anything. I, you're, you're really a homemaker. And the Lord's going to begin to use you. I see, I, I see the Lord doing something with that. There's really an explosion that's going to come out of your kitchen, your living room. And the living room, prophetically, that's the place where we dwell, the time that you spend with God. The living on how you spend the Lord. The Lord really wants to exaggerate himself through you. You believe that? Yeah, I know you feel that. Yeah, you're just a bundle of joy. You're just a, uh, um, you know what, what's awesome? I just saw electricity in your hands. Just hold your hands up. And I saw you coming to people, and I saw kidney stones exploding. I saw, I saw the, the, the uh, uh, I saw you touching those that had like uh, the gallbladder stones. Anything that had to do with stones, because I'm going to tell you, stones are issues and they're unforgiveness. The Bible talks about the stony hearts, those that have been offended. And because you didn't allow yourself to be offended, God has powered and granted you the peace of God. The Bible says that the peace of God will crush the head of Satan. And you're going to begin to see the weapons of your warfare. And when you lay hands on those, especially in the kidneys and in the bacteria, because you're caught, I'm telling you, you are really a dove in the spirit. And what a dove does, it has no gallbladder. So when it eats and when it flies over a field, it begins to lay pure seed. And I believe you're going to begin to teach children how to be pure. And you're going to teach them how to cultivate their minds and how to be pure before the Lord. Father, we thank you for that. How many of y'all know we need purity in the house? How many of you know that we need teachers to teach our children how to be pure? We just thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for that. Are we okay, guys? We all right? Yes, man in the black cat, can you stand up? Yes, sir. Boy, the Lord loves you, man. He really has favored you. Yeah. He really has favored you. I really see the spirit of counsel on you. I, I see a revolving door around you of just favor to where, and it's the little things. But it's about to be more obvious in your life. And I've seen where there's been, and you, I'm, I'm just telling you what I see. I see where there was, at one time, there was bullets shot at you. There was things that came against you, and the Lord protected you. The Lord, uh, uh, and you may not even have known this, but I'm telling you, there's been a protection over your life since the day that you were born. For a time such as this, you're a giver, and I see you giving out bread because the Bible says that that healing is the children's bread. And I see you giving counsel and giving bread to to those that like the like the uh, uh, John the Baptists, those that are kind of wild and kind of crazy and. I really see you coming in as a father, just fathering people with counsel. You really have an anointing to hug people. I'm telling you right now, you're really a father in the spirit. And I just really see that even when you shake somebody's hand, you have an impartation of comfort. So I just want to bless you with that because we really need that. I'm telling you right now, I just I see you going down the highway and just, just praying over the town and just praying over the house and just praying over certain things and lineages. And the Lord told me that there's an anointing on you to stop generational curses in people's lives. You, you know, you understand what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. You're a seer. And I'm telling you right now, just begin to, to speak things out louder than what you've had. Get more involved than what you've been. I just, I just see you just getting more. I just see you getting aggressive with the things of God. I just see you becoming just more alive and and not just on, you know, just, I'm going to just crank it up right here. I just see the Lord cranking this thing all the way up. So I really just, I, I can feel the power surge coming. I just, the Lord really wants to just crank some things up in your life. Father, we thank you for that. We thank you for that. Because the Lord says that because you are also called to protect the bride. Yeah. You really are called to protect the bride. Do you know what that means? You don't know what that means? 
You're really called to stand up for righteousness and justice and to help people know their place and know their position. So righteousness and justice are two pillars of the kingdom. You need to begin to start searching that out. You can get with Peter, whatever. There's a lot of stuff out there. You can get on YouTube with, you know, Miles Monroe, Bobby Connors. You can get on. Uh, there's there's many things the Lord's really going to begin to. There's a streamline of teaching coming to you to help build up, to help mold the things that, that God has given you. Amen. 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 Woo, man. How many of y'all know that there's a need to understand that God has not called us to be settled? There's a lot of different settlers and immigrants that have come over a place. But like I was telling you earlier, there's already a call over the land before you even moved here. There's already a call. I was going to wait till tomorrow, but man, I just got to bless you, man. I just got to bless you. Can you just stand up for this, you and your wife? Man, I tell you what. The Lord told me, he says, I'm going to blow his mind away and I'm going to fill his barns. I'm going to seed his land and I'm going to take care of his crops. There's a supernatural turning wheel of fire over you and your wife. And I'm telling you, he's going to slow down certain parts of the labor because there's a fire coming to the house and there's a fire coming to the city. And he's looking for managers, which are governors. He's looking for people to help govern the move of God. You understand that? The Lord told and I, and I was sitting and I, and I began to see, uh, I saw I saw just the barns, just at one time there was certain things, seeds that that may have died or seeds that have, may have been taken. But I just saw just, you know, what the Lord told me. He says, he wanted me to teach you this, that in the presence of God, there's no loss. He redeems the times. Oh, my Lord Jesus. What it'll take you 10 years to do, he's going to do it in one day. God has not, God is not late. Ooh, my Lord Jesus. I see helpers. I see you buying other people's properties that originally belonged to y'all. You need to begin to look at your DNA because there was some other lands around you that were either bought or in transition and it got taken, but the land is yours. You're going to begin to buy land at almost at a cheapest cost. God is extending. I see the Lord saying, I got to add horses to the chariot. I see the the, the weight. Is, it's like you got a, 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 a one-ton pickup truck pulling a 100-foot RV and you're popping willies. You can't move. The Lord is switching vehicles so you can begin to carry the glory of God. God has called you a governor, brother, in the spirit. And I'm going to tell you what that does. It coincides with a general. And a general, what it is, he understands the land. He knows everything in its region. A governor knows how to govern the people. He knows how to bring communication. He knows how to talk. He knows how to move. He knows what season it is. He knows when it rains, when the snow's coming. You can feel it in your bones when the when the when the when the body when the wind is changing, when the storm is changing. That's an anointing on you. That's not you got, I'm getting old, my back. And no, 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 no. Raise your hands because the Lord told me He's gonna straighten your back out. I've called you to straighten out the roads. I just saw you. I saw you getting into another business with the government of Ohio. Straightening out the roads. Relaying new asphalt. Laying new vision for those that have no vision in certain towns and certain cities. I see you helping people building certain stores because of the product that needs to come in to begin to cultivate, to know how to have businesses. I see that there's an anointing on you. And you carried weight that you should not have carried. But I'm telling you, God's going to lift you because you're going to catch a vision of this. He's going to flip you upside down and your back is going to straighten out. He's going to teach you how to walk with him to manage things that have already been given. But I'm telling you, I saw you like a Joseph. And I saw y'all teaching the government, the governors 
how to bring in, how to manage, how to fill barns. Uh, I'm telling you, I, I just see you. You have something with manufacturing. You have something with government. You have something. The Lord's about to flip your wig, man. I'm telling you right now. He's really going to straighten some things up. He's really going to straighten some things up. And I saw 80 years. Check this out. This is crazy. It takes, I think, 80 years for a season. It takes 80 years for an almond tree to produce every season. And the Lord told me that there's the end of an 80 years to where you're going to start seeing the fruit of what your forefathers have plowed for you. You're about to see an inheritance before you even think of dying. Because your inheritance is in you. God is taking you out of the old wineskin and he's going to get you drunk with the new wineskin. You've been asking the Lord for transition. Help me understand, Lord. He says, I'm going to teach you how to swim again. There's something about swimming. I see you swimming in the rivers, man. Just being free. You're really a governor, man. I'm telling you right now, there's government all over y'all. There's government all over y'all. You believe that? That is a big, that's big, that's huge. Yeah. You've been so faithful. Yeah. God has called you to the front lines. You're really going to be seers for the city. You're going to be seers for the house. God is really going to transition. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit's not going to allow you to sleep. There's going to be open heavens, visitations from the Lord, the angelic. Yeah, that's right. And the Lord wanted me to tell you, you need to stop holding back. You need to release him. That's why you've been having some crazy things with your back and your knees and all that stuff. He's going to teach you some things. Yeah. Man, we just thank you for this family, Lord. We just bless them. Bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Y'all receive that? Because if you don't want it, I'll take it. That's what I'm after. You have anything for him? You sure? This man right here with your eyes closed, can you stand up? Yes. Yes. Can you stand up real quick? Man, I saw, yeah, I think it's in Revelation where it says, um, to resist the devil, says, I believe it's just to resist the devil, uh, and he shall flee. Uh, I believe there's another part in front of that. I think it means obedient, be obedient, resist the devil, and he shall flee. Abide. Submit to God. And there's a shift there. And the shift is you're going to be going from resisting to abiding. To where you're not going to have to fight for things. You're not going to have to be stressed for things. You're not going to have to be unease at night. The Lord's going to teach you to sit at the table. You're a Joseph in a cave, and he's called you out. The enemy has really stolen the good things from you because he knows you're a giver. He knows how you are. And I believe you've come to a point in your life to where you're like, man, Lord, I the Lord's going to place some accountability and responsibility over you because you're ready for it. He's like, man, Lord, I'm just ready for this stuff, man. I'm just ready before this stuff. But yet you can you can hear that political spirit in the air like, well, you still need this and you still need that. And you still know the Lord, the love of God is just going to, I just see the Lord just sogging you, just dumping you in his love. And that's where the balance is going to be at. There's the, your anxiety and 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 battle with things and Yes, you know you're saved, but he's going to take you to a place to where you know that you've been called and commissioned. You're really, really, uh, uh, you're really an eagle, man. You're really an eagle. <clears throat> and the law has tried to, has co contained certain areas to where you're even afraid to go past the speed limit. The Lord's going to remove the speed limit and says, you're coming into a realm of, of the unlimitless. To where you can have as much as far as you can see. That's his love, man. That's his love. You're really a John the Baptist for this time. I see a scripture that the kingdom suffers violence and the violent take it by force. I see that on you because you're not afraid. You're not, you're not afraid in, in the dark. You're not afraid 
to walk. You're not afraid to be taken. You're not afraid to be rejected. You're not afraid to be abandoned. That the only thing that you have is him. And because of that, you're going to begin to see the, the destiny laid out before you. You're going to be transported to heaven and back. I'm telling you right now, that's going to be a new thing for you. Where you're going to come down and you're going to have the scrolls. You're going to have the plans and purpose for peoples in their life. And I'm going to tell you right now, there is a, a responsibility. I see younger ch children around you. I see there's accountability for younger children. And the Lord told me that you're going to learn to father these kids. And you're going to bring purpose and vision. You're going to teach them how to manage their kingship and their rulership. You understand? Does that make sense to you? Do you understand what I'm saying? And I'm telling you, I just really see, I really see that, that, that there's something with kids that God has drawn. There's just an anointing. There's, and I believe it's part of that river where you're coming out of the pond and, and, and jumping into the river. And I believe you're going to teach children how to swim. You're going to teach them how to soar. You, you're just, you're really a teacher for these young men. There's an accountability for, for, for the, the youth, but also the eight, nine, ten year olds. I, I just really see the Lord just really bringing, you know, there, how many of y'all know we need fathers? Y'all believe that? We need fathers in the land. So the Lord has really called you a father, man. Isn't that good? Did you understand everything? Yeah, I see you smiling, man. God loves you, brother. Be blessed. Be blessed. That whole row right there, that whole road next to you, there is just a connection of the spirit of revival in that whole row right there. That whole row, the people that are sitting right in your row right there. That's right, right in your row, your same row. I just see a big old match just starting that whole row on fire. That whole row on fire. I see your heads on fire right now. The Spirit, I just see the Holy Spirit just resting in that row right there. That is an evangelist row right there. There's fire that you're, that will not be turned off. You're going to know. You know, you know what? That's what it is, Pete. They're the burnt ones. The Lord told me that he's gathering those that have been burnt out. and he Because those that have been burnt know how to contain the fire. And that he's building a chimney. He, God's building his house. He's gathering the burnt ones. And you know what he's doing? He's gathering it because we know how to take the heat. And there's no roof because there's no limits. You're not going to be controlled by programs. Y'all are really going to see the Holy Spirit. You're really going to see the Holy Spirit. Brother, what's your name with that cup? Man, the Lord loves you, man. Yeah. There's an angel, and he's a planner, and he's been following you since the day that you've been born. He has predestined your life. He's a planner, and he guides you, and he guides you into protection. He guides you from the lies. He guides you from from the gossip he guides you from the slander the lord is really protecting you and i just see where's that scripture pete that says that as it jeremiah that i know the plans that have been set before you that's your scripture Jer jeremiah 33 right i'm just i'm, I'm 29 11 i'm just i'm just the the, the holy I'm, i mean it's not that i don't know scripture i just there's just so much going on. It's like a hundred channels that are open. I'm like, God, what are we doing? What, we're going to talk about this. We're going to do this. Or we're going to do that. But I'll tell you, there's really fire evangelism on y'all. Uh, there's something with the grocery store. I don't know what's up with that. I see an old grocery store. I see the goods. I see... I just really see you gathering the fruit and feeding the city, man. I just see fruit. I just see... Like I just, I just see it. it. It's, it's, it's like the spirit of Joseph, where he taught Pharaoh how to manage, how to do things, how to certain things. And the lady with your glasses, you've really, uh, 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 the Lord has anointed you for four seasons. You know what's coming. You know how to deal with certain situations. You know how to protect yourself. You're really anointed for the four seasons. And I'm going to tell you what that means. The Bible says to be ready in season and out of season. And the enemy has tried to take you out of certain seasons in your life and try to distract you. And the Lord says, you're not going to be distracted. He's tying you to a revolving door. I saw the Lord tying your belt to the revolving door.
to where you're not going to go anywhere. You're going to understand the times and the seasons like the sons of Issachar. You don't even know that you're a prophetess. That's the, that's the commission that's over your life. You have an accounting over you because you have a sharp tongue. So the Lord's going to change your language. He's going to change your language. you agree with that? Just stand up. Let me just throw that on you. Thank you, Father. We just thank you for that. We just love on her, Lord. We just thank you because she is just a servant, Father. She wants to, what is my, what am I, how do I get involved? What do I do? Lord says, you can have it all. Thank you. The Lord's really going to train you on what you see. Yeah. Power, Lord. Power, power. Man, what time is it, man? We haven't even done anything here yet on, as far as the message. It might just be for tomorrow. Oh, man. How, how we doing, Pete? How we doing? How are we doing? Let me share this with you. Let, let me just take you just for a second, okay? Can I just do this? Because we can get caught up in the manifestation of God. We can get caught up in his presence. But let me tell you what we really need. We need to know the DNA of where we're at. We need to know the governmental. We need, we need to know where the kingdom is. Because you can have church service but not know how to take a city. So we need to know where we're at. And I'm going to share something with you. Let me tell you how important it is that we're going from church to kingdom. And this is, this is what, that's the shift. In Matthew 13, 33, for those that need a scripture, there's a scripture right here. And I want to explain to you something. How many of y'all know that when Jesus said, the kingdom of God is at hand? The kingdom of God is at hand. I'm going to share something with you. We pray for revival, but did everything that just happened here happens in revival? Prophesying, praying for the sick, worship, blind eyes open. All of these things have happened in here. Those are the attributes of revival. But what we need is reformation. Is how do we take what's in the house so it can affect the city? Because what we need is we need to learn how to take what's been in here and we need to streamline it into the city so that why? So that we are the ones that reform the city back into the way that it was originally supposed to be. So we need Matthew 33. I'm going to give you an example of this. And this is a parable where God, where Jesus is talking about the kingdom. If your fingers are hurting, you can. Forgot you were playing. Just, you got an anointing on you, man. I got some stuff for you, but we're going to wait for tomorrow. I know your dad, boy. <laughs> Matthew 13, 33. This, I'm just going to spit out a couple of stuff real quick. Matthew 13, 33 says, another parable he spoke to them that the kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which it says a woman took and hid in three measures of that mill till it was all leavened. It says the kingdom of heaven is like leaven. Everybody say leaven. Which a woman took and hid in three measures of the mill till it was all leaven. Now, let me tell you what leaven is. Leaven is a substance, typically yeast, that is used in dough to make it rise. So leaven transforms and modifies it for the better. We need to learn how to transition to be able to come out of a church mentality and a kingdom purpose. So what we do is we allow the leaven. So what you do is when you begin to put the kingdom and you begin to put it in the city, the city begins to rise and it begins to change. Let me tell you what religion does. Religion separates the church. Oh, man, there's the, the world is crazy and it's, it's demonic. And it separates itself and the kingdom attaches itself. That's where we get religion. That's where we get religious spirit. As when we begin to separate ourselves for a body where you go into a town and you got 1,500 churches in a region and nobody has relationship at all. There is no relationship. There is no, the, and that's why you need an apostle, the apostleship. You need a, the kingdom's house where the apostolics are at because the, the apostles can see what's in that region. 
They're the ones that, that put things into place, the kingdom of God. So it's like yeast. It, when you begin to mix it, it takes and it controls. And guess what happens? The city will respond to the kingdom. And I'm telling you, there's been a, a, one of the things that's in Ohio, there's been a, I, I can see in the spirit where there's been, thi- there's been rivers and streams in certain areas that have been rerouted in some areas. Me and Pete were talking about something like, and I feel like there's, and I don't know, I don't know how the, 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 the height, the, 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 the low side, but I see Ohio like a bow. I see it just kind of like on high on one side and Toledo, Ohio, and all these places. And the Lord's really going to bring a balance to where everybody's going to begin to feed off of this stream, begin to feed off of this river. There's really going to be a divine connection between the houses together. And it's going to take the apostolic house, the kingdom of God, to be able to see what is needed in this region. How many of y'all know that we need to learn to walk together? When we begin to walk together as a body, we'll begin to see the fruits that come out of that. We okay? What you don't understand, you'll mismanage. That's why we need revelation. That's why we need the presence of God. Because there's certain things that we have to understand, and it's only going to be guided by his spirit. Not by having 500 books in 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 your room. I'm not saying that doesn't help. I'm not saying we don't need that. But what I'm saying is, the, what does the Bible say? He says, I'm taking the bride where it's never been. No book, no person, but only Christ, the Holy Spirit, the confirmation of leadership and body walking together in unison. He's taking the bride where it's never been. Y'all believe that? The kingdom connects itself to the city, to the state, to the region, to reform, and it will affect government. So the reformation is to bring things back into its original place. To, to, and I'm telling you, the church has separated itself from its original state. And that political spirit has filtrated to where it's even affected a political spirit in the church to where there's separation. Let me tell you how, where the deception comes in. The deception comes in if you have a pastor or you have an apostle, but you have a prophet that is more anointed or is a seer, but still doesn't ha- just because you're a seer in the house doesn't give you the authority to release your authority. There's proper honor that needs to be placed. Just because you're more gifted and talented, I'm telling you when I was telling Pete earlier that you can have an aircraft, right? The guy driving the aircraft has the throttle, the, the he's got the power, he's got everything, but there's a flagger. There's only one that can give you the commission when to fly. And above him, you got people that are in the airways. The fivefold ministry, according to Ephesians. It's the spirit of revelation. Those that are seers have the anointing and the commission to let you know when to function in your authority because sometimes we see things and i'm telling you because i've experienced it to where oh i've been called i'm good i've i've done this and i've prophesied and i moved here and there and yet more gifted and talented than your pastor and all of a sudden you get out prematurely and guess what happens you can't take that giant You can't go into a field by yourself. God has not called us to be by ourselves. That is an independent spirit and it's demonic. If you get offended, you need to go back into your covering. Or you need to get back into a relationship. We need to know how to honor one in the house in order to walk together. And there's a big, and that's even, so that political spirit has affected us. That political spirit is so strong that it's even affected the way that we pray. Our prayer is based on the laws of the land. We don't even realize that. That our prayers based on the laws affect us. Well, God, if it's your will. Right now, I'm looking at the stock market and uh, 
Right now, there's 1.3% interest rate on this type of, uh, you know, bank thing and this thing and that thing. And uh, so if I take this and I move it here and I do this and that, and God's like, hey, man, just plug into me, bro. There's 100% interest rate right here. We got to know how to go to heaven and get this thing down. Don't allow that government to affect. Your bank account does not detect your level of, of faith, your level of seeing. Some of us are breakers in the spirit where we could break this thing forth. You understand what I'm talking about? How do we break the spirit of poverty? By giving. Boy, I don't want to live a boring life. Make God move in your house. Make God move in your grandchildren. Make, you know what, Lord, I, I, I honor my dad's house. You know, I'm thinking about tearing it down, but it was my grandfather's. I don't want to tear that fence down. My grandfather built that fence, man, but it sure does look bad. Man, come on. Tear that fence down. Rebuild that fence. Lord really wants to love you and, and bless you. There's nothing wrong with asking God. I'm not talking about a prosperity message, but I'm telling you that even the prosperity has had, there's, it's been this political spirit. Let me tell you something. If there's anything that we need to do is we need to go and redefine what the gospel means. Like the word conviction. You want to know what the word conviction means? It means to be convinced of the truth. So when Holy Spirit comes, when the spirit of truth comes, what does it mean? What does that word repent means? It means change your mind. Change the way you think so that way correct truth can come in. You want to know what sin means? Sin means missing the mark. But when you come in with an old covenant mindset, you can damn a house. You need to repent. You're in sin, and the conviction of God is going to be before you. And actually what God is saying, clear your mind so you can hear my truth so you can stop missing it. Ooh, we need to kind of clean some things up. You want to know why, Peter, we need to clean some things up? Because the youth are coming. The children are coming. Y'all remember when the Lord went to the money changers and he flipped the changers, the money changers and said, not in my house. We're not going to have this. We're not going to do all of that. Guess what happened? The children ran in. Man, y'all feel that? Oh, that was an imitation for the children. Boy, the children know where Papa's at, man. Something's wrong. We don't have children in the house. They know where the presence of Father is. We can't leave that generation out. This lady in the pink, woo. God has a big accountability on you. He's more serious than what you think, but he says don't take it serious. Can you just stand up? I just see the Lord just coming and just, just blowing on you, just loving on you. He says, you know what? I've been the one to take account of everything. You haven't lost anything. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Lord's really going to honor you. You really, man, I, I'm telling you right now, I see the Lord, you're, you're, the heavens are going to open. You're going to begin to see things. There's new hunger coming to you. There's new vision. There's new purpose. The Lord says you're not going to have to struggle in the spirit to hear me. The Lord's going to educate you. He's sending you an angel of understanding. The Lord's going to teach you in your house. And I see you just kind of like, okay, Lord, do I do this? And what do I do that? And do I do this? And do I do that? And what season? The Lord said, just, just love me. All you got to do is just love me. Just love me. I'm going to feed you. I'm going to take care of you. Just love me. You're going to see clear. You're not going to need all. God is taking crutches and stilts and things that you think you needed to hold you up. He's taking everything around you because the Holy Spirit is comforter. He's going to guide you in things. And I'm telling you right now, between now and the end of the year, the Lord is really, I, I just see vehicles change. I see two bank accounts. I see the Lord, he's got to feed, he's got to feed what's in you. He's got to feed that. God is not a God of lies. I'm telling you, he, does, he doesn't lie. And there's been a political spirit that has tried to shut you down. And has tried to tell you, well, I'm, this is my worth. No, it's not your worth. The first thing you're going to see is you're going to see the value that's inside of you. And you're going to know how to value and cover you. The problem is, 
is that you need to start saying no to the enemy and yes to God. Because we have a hard time saying no. And our heart has been so open to where the enemy comes in, just like we have our heart to the Lord. So the Lord is te- You're a teacher. You have an anointing to teach. You have an anointing to cover. And, uh, man, this is crazy. We okay? You okay? Yes. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. I don't know. I'm just going to tell you what. I just, I see a, I see like a blue pickup truck. I see an older house. I, uh, I don't know if you got any dogs. I see dogs in the yard. I just see some certain things. But I saw the Lord. I saw value. I, I just saw, there was like a flag, a golden flag over and there's value, and I saw that this is a season where there's payment, there's repayment. There's things that you should have never experienced and the Lord was there. There's a repayment. There's a washing of the mind and the heart right now. Man, I can feel that. I can feel that. Yeah, the enemy has really tried to cause you to have a heart attack, and the Lord says, no, 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 she's not going anywhere. She's not going anywhere. She's not going anywhere. There's purpose, there's destiny, there's plans. Thank you, Father. Man, I see the scrolls in your hands. The Lord is placing destiny. You're going to begin to see things are just going to come so clear. But you're going to know how to hold the seed in the land. Because right when the enemy, right when God plants a seed, the crows come and they try to take the seed out of you. That's been a revolving, frustrating door in your life. Where the Lord comes in and the enemy takes it out. And the Lord comes in. How many of you know that you are the soil and he is the seed? The kingdom is the seed and he is the soil. And the Lord says people don't know, but the soil has to accept the seed. And God says you've been through enough to where your body is ready to accept what I'm about to give you because you're going to know how to manage it. You're going to know how to water it. You're going to know how to hold this thing. And you're going to know how to... You're going to know how to, to, to crop this thing. You're going to know how to make things grow and stand straight. And you're not going to lose this. And you're not going to lose that. You're not going to wither. You're not going to go left. You're not going to go right. But you're going to grow upright. The Lord is really just bringing you upright. This is your season of just going upright. I see a plumb line on you. If you don't know what that means, ask Peter. But there's a plumb line on you. That's right. Man, bless you. Bless you. Does that make sense? Oh, man. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. How we doing, Pete? We're doing okay? Where are we at? 9.30. Oh, my Lord. We'll probably deal with this. I'm going to spit something out real quick just for the sake of those that are uh, may not be here tomorrow. Probably take a picture of, of some of this. But one of the things that we need in uh, some of the characteristics of the apostolic house, okay, for some of y'all that are listening on the media, uh, I'm probably going to get into this in the morning. But one of the things that an apostle, the characteristics of an apostle in the house, the apostolic, and uh, how many of y'all know that Paul says that I am a master chief builder? What does that mean? Was he talking about buildings? He was talking about building people. He knew how to build people. He knew how to build the house. He knew to put where the river was coming, where it was going, how to be able to, to gather the fruit of what's been planted. One of, the, one of the characteristics of an apostle is that he has to have vision capacity. And what that means is they need to be able to see what the Lord has called them to accomplish in the ministry that they are currently undertaking and also planning a church that Jesus is building. That's an apostolic house. The second thing, I'm just going to run through this real quick. The second thing is that an apostolic house is that they create ownership of the ministry. Building according to what God is doing and also what God wants them to have a part of the vision in order to fulfill the purpose in the region. This is what an apostolic house, what it functions. We need an apostolic, an apostle when an apostle, how do you know when we need a prophet? You got to pray like one. How do we know? How does the Lord know when, and I'm telling you right now, the pastors are going to invite the apostolic. He, the pastors are going to begin. This is not just through Ohio, but the pastors can only take the church to a certain point. 
When the people begin to get a vision of an apostolic house, the pastors are going to invite the apostles and prophets back in because that is where the beginning of the government shifts. The third thing is an apostle are able to relate to the unchurched. Listen, people, I don't care what area that you function in. We need apostle teachers, those that, are, that know how to be a father over the past. We're going to have pastors that function in the apostolic. You're going to have evangelists that are going to function in the apostolic. They're going to know how to hear. They're going to know how to see. Well, you know, I've been called to do this. Let me tell you something. If there's nobody in that town that can preach, you're going to preach. If there's nobody in that town that knows how to evangelize, you're going to evangelize. So what is my calling? To do everything that the Lord can function in. That's a true house. I can teach. I can preach. The Lord will give me a vision. Well, I'm telling you something's up with this international angel. And it's crazy because there was two angels that were sent to Daniel. And they think one of them was Michael and Gabriel. Let me tell you, this is what's crazy. Is that Daniel's vision was so was so powerful. It says that one of the angels had to interpret the vision. And the first time that Daniel had an encounter with an angel, it says that he got sick for a few days because this thing was too powerful. So the second thing was there was the second time that Daniel had this, this, this vision. It says that one of the angels had to come and it had to interpret the vision. And the other one had to come and bring understanding to what he was seeing. There's an angelic help here, this international angel. And this is what's crazy. It came to me. I saw him this morning at the Four Seasons, and I was eating, and he was sitting there. And he asked me for permission to be commissioned here in this state. And you're like, well, how does that happen? Because when you walk in the governmental mantle of God, the angels are commissioned to the, your commission. And these angels are waiting to be released because they're tied to your commission. They're tied to your promise. I remember a guy by the name of Bob Jones says, man, I went to heaven and I saw, angel, I saw angels that were in line and they were unemployed. And he says, God, why are these angels unemployed? He goes, because people stop praying. Their prayers are connected to the angels and the angels are connected and assigned to the commission that we are commissioned to. Called angels without of an assignment. Well, I don't believe in angels. Well, it's okay. One of the one of the things about the uh, the apostle is that it, it is effective in building relationships. Your house has to be effective in building relationships. Number five, apostles recognize the giftings and callings upon people, and they understand where each person fits and equips and functions where they belong. I'm going to stop right there because uh, I believe there's some more stuff for the house. We doing okay? What time is it, Pete? Oh, man, 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 man. Can you stand up in the black? Can you just stand up? Yes. Both of y'all stand up. Both of y'all stand up. All three of y'all stand up. I don't care. Both, yeah, y'all three. You stand up too. Yeah, that's all right. Sometimes in the spirit, when you get close to one another, you can pick up like two or three different channels. You, and and what we call that too, sometimes you can hang out. It's called cross pollination. When you hang out with somebody, the anointing just jumps on them, and you become a carrier of what they carry. Well, where's that in the Bible? Well. It, it, you want to go ahead and look at it, but I tell you what, it says, you know, be careful of transferred spirits, but let's get on the, the, the anointing shifting here, right? Not the demonic, right? You're really called to shift. All three of y'all, there's a shifting for y'all in the spirit. Y'all are called to shift. You're called to move. God has given you permission to move him. Call it as it is. I just see, I see the coin being returned. How many of y'all know that everything that has been established in our life on the earth is taking almost a little over than 100 years for man to figure out that everything that belongs to them is in the ground. We just didn't know how to pull it out. We didn't know how to pull it out. I just see all three of y'all right now, the Lord is saying, call it out. Y'all are really called to the resources of heaven. You're really called to that because you're not, you're not an Indian giver. You know what that means? I'm... I'm not going to take back what I gave. I'm not going to, the Lord, y'all, I just, 
One, two, three. I just there's 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 a portal right here. There's a portal right here. Thank you, Father, for this, man. This Father, thank you, Lord. Y'all are dreamers. The Lord wants me to tell you that you are the dream of God. Yeah. That's right. And there's assignments attached to those dreams. It's time to begin to, I heard the Lord say, it's time to begin to write. Put the pin on the pad. Put the tire on the, on the asphalt. You can have power, but if, if the power doesn't hit the wheels, you're not going anywhere. You understand that? The Lord's really going to teach you how to shift gears in the spirit. He's going to really teach you how to move with what's been given. So uh, I just bless you all with that, man. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you, Father. We having a good time? We're okay? Pete, you can come up here. You can come up here real quick. This man in the back, stand up for me right there in the back, right there, right there. Yes, you turning. Yes, come on. I see you peeking through the windows of heaven, man. And the Lord loves that. The Lord says, you don't have to knock, man. Just come on in. You become a, you were a servant. And from servanthood, going into sonship. And from sonship, come into a friend of God. And from a friend, you come into the bride. The Lord has really trusted you with some things. You could have really handled some things in your own hands. And because you gave God the opportunity to use the justice of heaven to justify certain things, now he's going to honor you. I really just, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a whirlwind around you. And I see that there was things that you did not allow to get attached to your life. Things that, you know, how many of you know that God carved us into his image? You understand that? God carved us. In other words, he made you exactly the way that he wanted you. And you're a seer of, 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 of and, be, and I'm going to tell you, this is what's crazy. Many of us think that God is a God of judgment, there's a, but there's a different, God's ju judgment, remember when Noah, 120 years to, 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 you know, they didn't know what water in a boat was. Many people think, well, it was 120 years to build the ark, I mean, this whole thing with Noah, but we don't realize that it was 120 years of the mercy of God because nobody repented in that time. It wasn't about building a boat, cutting off faith, everything. But I really see, I see this gavel in your hand like a judge. God's really be giving you some authority to help people call back the justice in their life. You really have a commissioning to help people to find out their purpose and their destiny and to teach them how to fight what belongs to them. There's really a spirit of counsel on you, and it's tied to inheritance. And part of your inheritance is to prophesy, is to build is to, to build people, is to build relationships. So uh, I just want to bless you with that. You know, there's so much more I can, I can kind of get into. But your main thing is, is uh, uh, there's, there's also a, there's, there's a gathering. There's like a, man, I just see an anointing for gathering, like just gatherings of, of people just want to go to your house or we'll just barbecue at your place or we'll just, there's a gathering, and there's there's just such a love of of God on you, and and uh, I just I just really want to bless you with that. I I just want to bless you. The Lord is really pleased with you, man. He really loves you. Amen. 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 Just because many of y'all weren't prophesied over does not mean anything. Anything that you feel that God needed and all this and that, you know that lady in the purple in the back. Can you stand up? Yes, 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 yes. That's right. That's right. That is exactly right. Thank you, Father. Woo, Jesus. Woo, gee, man, I can go somewhere right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Lord told me that you've been in the mountains. I see you on the mountaintop. You're really a seer in the spirit. You're one of those eagles that God is calling to, to soar. God is as a seer. You're a seer to soar. And I'm telling you right now that you carry the keys of 100-year-old prophecies. 
And the Lord's going to have you spit some things out in different houses and different people's lives in their living room. You're really a seer. You're really a seer. You're, you, you're, you're, you're really, uh, uh, man, God has really anointed you to bring things together, to knit. To, I see you sewing and putting some things together in perspective and matching this and that and taking things of that you don't have and making some. I, I just, you're really a, 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 God is just, you're really creative. You're the creativity of God. I just see the creativity of God over your life. And we just thank you for that. And you just extend your hand on those that are sick. And I don't, God ain't got nothing to do with age. Ain't got, it just has to do with purpose. You understand that there's really an anointing on you. Father, we just bless her with the anointing. We just pray for a fresh anointing over her life, Lord. And we just ask that wherever she goes, that she would invade everything around her with change. That where there's death, there is life. Where there is poverty, Father, that there is blessing. The winds of change. That's what I hear over you. The winds of change. Father, we just bless her, man. You know, uh, I saw the Lord. It's like he pulled your head back and he opened up your mouth and he began to put fish in your mouth. And I began to see as the Lord was giving you these fish and he was putting them in your mouth, your mouth began to open wide and the fish turned into scrolls. Um, and as he scrolls, I felt like the Lord was saying that he was about to give you, a, it was like fresh revelation for this now time season. And I heard the Lord say, the past 15 years, he says, I'm redeeming the past 15 years, something about 15 years ago. I don't know what that's about. I'm, I'm not going to ask. But, but 15 years ago, the Lord says, I'm taking you back to 15 years. He says, and I'm redeeming the time that you thought what was lost. He says, watch what I do now. And it's almost like the, the, the fish is the fresh provision. It's the, it, it's, it's the manna of heaven that's coming upon you. But the scrolls is the revelation of the Lord, of the word. coming. It's, like it's going to become magnified in, who, in you. So, and I just feel like, um, and just a greater, like a level of faith. Like, like when you begin to speak, there's a, de there's a declaration that's coming out of you. It's almost as, and I saw your rod, and I said, how, come on, Lord, how prophetic is a rod? And, and, and I'm just, yeah. <laughs> but, like, even that, like, how, like, is a rod? And the Lord says, I need for you to begin to put it in the water. <laughs> put it in the water and watch what the Lord does. And, and they're just great blessing and favor. And I don't know what um, what this is about, but I also see like the Lord's going to bring restoration and unity with family. Um, where where um, whoa um, shake it by seke. And I just declare the Father's love, love, love over you. And He loves you so much. Get ready for the blessings, Amen. Yeah. Come on. This lady right here in the. Yes, you're right here. Yes, you're moving right. Can you stand for me? You're sitting right next to this. Yes, yes. Can you stand up? Man, when I look at you, I see you. The Lord told me that you're going to write songs for this generation. I see this song. Man, I was looking at, uh, I don't know if it was Edward, uh, uh, Catherine Coleman last night. And I had to repent because, you know, I'm like, there's no power in hymns. And let, just, just stand right there. So last night, I was talking about having an encounter with heaven where I was at the edge of the table, and there was a seat next to me that was, that was nobody was there. And then I began to see Elijah and all these guys there. And the, the, Jesus came out with this big old harpoon, and he had all these different types of meats and stuff. And right when I was going to get to get my meat, Paul the Apostle jumps in, and he busts through the door, and he has this dinosaur leg, and he goes, hey, man, there's meat on this bone, man. And I'm like, Lord, what is that? It's a dinosaur bone. Remember where Paul says that we're fitted and joined together as a body? And the Lord began to tell me, he says, and I said, Lord, what do you, why is this dinosaur bone? That's ancient. He goes, many people have forgotten my promises. And there's meat still on what they stopped praying for. There's going to be songs downloaded. And when I see you, I see that song. Holy, holy, holy. Holy is the Lord. And I just see this, this, all this angelic around you. 
And I begin to see you sing, and as you sing, I can see the children just, just coming, saying, where is that coming from? Where is that sound coming from? You have an anointing to declare prophetic utterance at this time. And those that have been abandoned, I'm going to tell you one of the anointings that you have is God's giving you the anointing to find those that have been lost. You're, the prophetic anointing that is coming over your life is you're going to have a vision where the runaways are at. Those that have been sick, those that are, have been abused, those that have been stolen. I forgot what they call that, where they've been abducted. There's an anointing on you to see in the spirit to find those that have been abducted. Like, Lord, I don't know how, the, uh, I'm telling you, there's, there's a realm open for you. This song, the Lord said, just begin to sing this song. And you're going to, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, the Lord's really going to mess your time, your schedule up. He's really going to, because you've really been, there's a, there's a new cry in you. There's, there's been a, a shifting in your prayer life. There's been a shifting in, in the way that you see things. There's been a different hunger. And you're like, man, God, there's, how do we get this? How do we get more? How do we get fed? And I'm telling you right now, the Lord has answered. He's at, and there's an accountability. And I saw you sitting out with an open heaven. I had an encounter one time. I got called off this lawn. I was, I was cutting grass in my uncle's church. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. I get this call from Washington State. I'm in San Antonio. And I get a call. And this guy's brother is there on our church. And he says, hey, Brandon, can you talk to a, a, a family member of mine? He goes, that's all I want to tell you. And I said, sure, that's fine. He goes, it's an emergency. I went, got off the lawnmower, went inside my uncle's house, and I sat in the living room, and the screen opened, and he was sitting there in the living room. I knew his apartment number, what he was wearing. His girlfriend was cooking chorizo and eggs in the kitchen. He had black lugs on. The stereo was on the right side. You're on the, sec the car that he was driving, everything. And I began to tell him, I said, hey, let me tell you. You're sitting down on the couch. You're wearing this cut. This is what you're wearing. Cut off sleeves. This is the kind of vehicle. He says, I'm on my way. We're having a conference. When this, I don't want to go into this whole thing, but when this guy, he flew from, he was about to do the biggest drug deal, and it was a setup, and he was about to do life in prison. And I'm sitting there, and I'm having this encounter. And we didn't have the face thing and all. It was just over the phone. But how many of y'all know that there's no distance and time and separation in the presence of God? You're about to experience this. This is a portal that is over you. And you're a carrier. You're going to carry this back wherever you go. I'm telling you right now, you're a carrier of the open heavens. There's a need for it. There's a need for the experiences of God. And when he showed up the last day of the conference... I began to go into this trance. He walked in. I walked in. And we went into this portal. And I'm telling you, they filmed it. They said that this, it was one of the most. And I'm going to tell you, I went into the spirit realm. And I saw the hordes of hell. And I saw the enemy. And I saw the plan for the next 10 years over the whole region. And he was calling me like this. Come and read it. You want to know my plans? Come and read it. And I'm telling you. I didn't get that close because I knew where grace was. There's certain things that we need to learn how to use Holy Spirit to fight things for us instead of doing it because we're called in a certain way of our life. Just because you're called, there's still a protection. And I'm going to tell you, when we went into this experience, I began, he began to pull out a sword. And I began to pull out my, I'm going to tell you what happened. As the Lord came behind me and my body went into, he came, unzipped me. I lost all limbs in my leg. The Lord walked in, zipped me, and I had a sword. And we were, and while we were going through the spiritual battle, there was people that were being delivered. There was eyes open. There was legs growing. There was, grandmothers were, were screaming because their grandkids were, were manifesting during the presence that what was going on. This is an open portal that, that, you, that you're about to experience. Your region needs to, you're an eagle in the land. Amen. Man, God bless you. God bless you. A lot of glory. A lot of glory. Jesus. My brother with the little hat on here. I know you got some a little while ago. Uh, um, I heard the Lord say, tell him he's a windmaker. And I saw you, and I'm just going to, the way the Lord shows it to me, he speaks to me, and he shows me weird things sometimes, so, so i got to give a little context. But I saw you as a saxophone player. And in the saxophone player, they, I, I, as, as, a, 
as I saw you in the spirit playing this wind instrument, I saw where the enemy tried to come and take your breath. And then as you were playing this instrument, the reed inside the instrument cracked, and there was a sound that was coming out of the instrument that wasn't your sound. And it was almost as if the enemy was trying to come to distort the sound that was inside of you. But then I saw the Lord come, and he gave you a brand new wreath. And then he said, tell him to blow this thing again. And there's a fresh sound that's coming out of you. There's a sound of, it's, it's a sound of an awakening, but I see it's a sound of restoration. And it's almost as if I see you fathering a generation. It's going to be, it, it's as if you're going to go into places, there's going to be favor. The Lord's going to give you favor. There's going to be doors of opportunity. The Lord's going to open up for you to step into this place where you can bring restoration to those people who feel like they're lost. Those people who have lost their voice, those who have lost the sound. He says, tell them to breathe. Tell them to play that sound. Um, so I really believe it's a good season for you to get ready because there's a new sound that is being birthed inside of you, and it's his voice and it's his wind coming out of you because you're a wind maker. Holy Ghost. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Shake it, Come on, this a, listen, guys. We could do this all night. I can feel it's open, boy. Whoa, man. Huh. Well, just real quick through the media, I saw homes being broken out. I saw some of y'all know what I'm talking about that is watching right now. Yes, the Lord has called you to have prophetic training in your house. He's called you to open up your pantry. The Lord has called you to begin to use every resources that you have for the kingdom of God. God, wanna, God wants to manifest. How many of y'all know that we're going from church back into the kingdom? And part of that is opening your own, your own homes. So there's something about the houses right now. I see that there's, there's a few pastors that are about to lose their building. The Lord says, you haven't lost your purpose. You may have lost your building, but you haven't lost your purpose. I can break open in your house. And I can pay your house off. Give me what is yours, and I'll write the check. So there's something about not giving up. The Lord says, don't abort the calling of God that I've given you. Don't allow a spiritual abortion. Don't get rid of what's I've, what I've placed in you. So I talk to those that are in the media right now to open up your homes. God's, there's a well in your living room right now. There's a well in your living room. The Lord told me, open up your house and I will heal your children. Some of y'all are going through some things with your children right now. The Lord says, what's caused the rebellion isn't your children. What's caused it is that you haven't responded to the call that I've given you. Your children are a reflection of what you haven't responded to me, just like they're not responding to you. So the Lord is really, he wants to break these walls and bring peace in the house. He says, open up the house and I'll heal the land. That is a word from God right now. Open your house and I will heal your land. Y'all believe that? Man, I felt a wind on that. Open your house and I will heal your land. Thank you, Father, for that. We just thank you for tuning in. We thank you for what, for hanging out and, and you know, Take this wherever you go. There's an impartation of, of just a greater way of seeing God, a different way of seeing who he is and the way that he sees you. We just thank you for that, Pete. This, this, this is your house. Who, who's not going to be here tomorrow? Who's not going to? Okay. Okay. Well, since I know you're not going to be here tomorrow, I was going to wait. But, but uh, Lori, I just want to tell you, um, the Lord says, get ready. There's a governmental shift that's coming into your Hillsdale. And even the way that you, you guys have been doing, and I don't know nothing about how you do your ministry, but there's a shifting that's coming. And I, I, it's almost as if this, it, is the, it, is a, it is a kingdom flipping where I saw like the Lord flipping the church upside down. And the way that you used to do things, not because it was wrong, or, but it's because what you knew how to do. There's a new order that's coming in, and it's the, it's the, it's the, uh, the order of authority of heaven. The kingdom is about to be, be just come manifested in your home. And, and it's almost as if, and I hear the Lord saying, you need to begin to protect your house. You need to begin to protect your house and even protect, um, protect.
protect those things that you allow people to speak into your house because there's going to be a governmental shifting that needs to come. And not everybody's going to understand it, but he's going to give you wisdom. He's going to give you strategy on how to maneuver this boat. Because what you got is not just a boat. It's, 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 a, it's like a freight lane. It's a, it's, a, it's a cruise ship. And, and because you're so vital in, the, in, this, in this region that people are going to look to you and you're going to be a, light, a lighthouse. And it's almost as if people are going to see there's a sound that's going to come out of, out of the, the house of refuge, right? And it's like, you, I, need, I just need to get there. If I could just get there. There's something happening. If I could just get there. And it's almost as, um, so get ready because I feel like the Lord's about to shift where even the message where, where the, the, um, you guys are going to begin to establish the government ahead and where you're going to begin to position your pastors, but even the apostolic. It's what it is. It's, really, it's, it's, it's the Ephesians 4.11. That you would begin to teach, and you're going to be—it's leaders that are destined to lead. You're going to begin to prepare the bride, not those that sit back and just sit in the pews and just listen to a message. But you're going to bring up those, and you're going to train the leaders, and you're going to position them to be a voice. Come on, or be a voice. You're not just going to talk about doing stuff. You're going to demonstrate how to do it. Amen. Ah, come on. Just, just, just to add to that, uh, um, I saw my my um, something just hit me with my rib when he was prophesying to you. And the rib protects the heart. The Lord's really going to mend leadership. There's going to be a unison of, of, of some things where the spirit of, of counsel is going to come in. He's really going to, uh, I just see the Lord clearing the air on a lot of things. He's really going to heal the house, heal the heart in the areas. So uh, praise God for that. Man, thank you. One last thing, and we're going to close to this lady that's next to you, brother, right here with the round right here in the middle. Yeah. Um, I saw the Lord removing the band-aid from you today. Um. Holy Spirit. And uh, Jesus. And he's really going to bring healing to your heart. I just feel like the Lord's bringing healing to areas of your heart. And there's been, you've been in seasons where it's felt like you just kind of, and it's not even intentional, but it, it's just band-aids have been placed on the heart. Band-aids have been placed on the heart. And I saw the Lord removing that band-aid. There's no more going to be temporary things, but I feel like the Lord is going to come and there's going to be a great love outpouring on, on top of you. But I even feel like if there's even any kind of sickness in your body, the Lord's bringing healing in that area right now. But I feel like the Lord's restoring love, restoring your joy, restoring the, like the happiness. It's, the, it's like I just feel like buckets of ooey-gooey goodness being just poured upon you. You know? Yeah. And I see your eyes being opened so bright and wide right now. And what the, what the enemy meant for bad, watch the Lord's going to turn this thing around. Yeah. Fresh fruit. Fresh fruit. I heard that for you. Fresh fruit. Fresh fruit. Wow. Jesus' name. Well, tonight was fun. Tomorrow's going to be wild. We have a very special, I know that uh, Brandon has a word that uh, he's going to share. We're going to do a panel tomorrow. So we're going to have a group of us up here, we're going to tackle the apostolic, supernatural, the prophetic realms, the glory realms, the second heavens, the third heavens. We're going to just let it rip potato chip.